everyone! Today's story is The Sparrow, the Crow and the Peril by Rosalind Kervin and Melanie Williamson. Once a small brown sparrow and a big black crow flew into a beautiful garden. They hopped around together looking for tasty worms and maggots to eat. They chatted happily and seemed to be the very best of friends. But suddenly, Crow gave a cough of excitement. He turned his back on Sparrow and spread out his wings as if he were trying to hide something. Hey, tweeted Sparrow, what are you up to Crow? What have you got there? Nothing, Crow said quickly. But Sparrow could tell he was lying, for the next moment Crow leaped forward and grabbed something in his beak. Then he flapped his wings and carried it up to the very top of the highest tree in the garden. Come back! Sparrow squawked up at him. Show me what you've got. Why should I? Crow called. It's mine! Sparrow ruffled her feathers. If you were really my friend, she grumbled, you would share things. At the very least, you would tell me what it is. Crow gave a cackle of laughter. All right, I'll tell you, Sparrow. It's a beautiful white peril from an eating, a real treasure. It's much too fine for a scraggy little creature like you to see. I'm not scraggy, cried Sparrow. How dare you insult me? Let me see it, Crow. You beast, no, called Crow. Never. Sparrow flew into a rage. She hopped up to the tree and began poking its trunk with a sharp little beak. Hey tree, she yelled, don't let that nasty selfish crow sit in your branches a moment longer. Shake him out, make him fly away. Tree gazed down at Sparrow. Certainly not, he boomed. I'm not getting involved in your silly argument. Sparrow exploded with anger. Well, she cried, if you're too mean to help me, I shall fetch the woodcutter cutter to chop you down. Sparrow flew like the wind to the woodcutter's cottage. Quickly, quickly, Sparrow twittered at him. Go and chop down the tallest tree in the garden. Why should I, you silly little bird, laughed the woodcutter as he flicked Sparrow out of the way. You horrible man, cried Sparrow. I'm going to fetch Mouse, Mr. Woodcutter. I'm going to get her to chew up your clothes as a punishment. At that very moment, Mouse poked her head out of her hole. What's going on, she squeaked. You've got to chew up Mr. Woodcutter's clothes, said Sparrow, because he won't do what I tell him. Eek, no thank you, squeaked Mouse. I'd rather chew bread any day. And she scuttled back inside. As you won't do what I say either, Mouse, Sparrow squawked after her. I'm going to get Dog to gobble you up. Sparrow found Dog snoozing in his kennel at the other end of the garden. Wake up, Dog, she called. I've got a nice juicy mouse for you to eat for your dinner. Dog opened one eye and yawned. No, thanks, he barked. I can't stand the taste of mouse. Well, you've got to eat it anyway, snapped Sparrow. It's good for you. No, said Dog. Yes, said Sparrow. No, said Dog. You naughty, stubborn animal, cried Sparrow. I shall send Stick to hit you as a punishment. Sparrow sped to the shed where Stick lived. Stick! Stick, she called. Come out here and hit Dog as a punishment for being stubborn. Stick hopped out, looking very surprised. Dog? she said. But I like Dog. We often play fetching games together. I'm not going to hit him. Oh, 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 wept Sparrow. Why won't anyone do what I tell them? Well, Stick, as you won't help me, I'm getting fire to burn you to ashes. And she flew away straight to the house and through a window, landing on the edge of the fireplace. Fire was burning away cheerfully when Sparrow arrived. Hello, Sparrow, he sizzled. Whatever's the matter with you? Everything's the matter, sighed Sparrow. You've got to go and burn up Stick because he won't do what I tell him. That's nothing to do with me, cackled Fire. I can't go round burning innocent sticks. Sparrow, just because you're in a bad mood. Oh, so that's how it is, is it? Squawked Sparrow. Well, since you won't help me either, Fire, I'm getting the sea to come and put you out. 
Sparrow zoomed out of the window, out of the garden, across the forest and down to the beach. There she found Sea playing wave games in the sand, rushing in and drizzling out again. See, see, cried Sparrow. It's time to stop playing. I've got an important job for you. Go ashore to the house that stands in the beautiful garden, hurry inside and find fire, then pour yourself over him and put him out. No, no, gurgles Sea. I'm having too much fun. Find someone else to do your dirty work, you silly little bird. Sparrow flapped her wings with rage. You'll be sorry, see, she squawked. I'm going to get Elephant to drink you up every single drop. Sparrow flew furiously back into the forest. Then she found Elephant under the trees, enjoying her afternoon nap. Oi! cried Sparrow, jumping up and down on Elephant's enormous back. Wake up! I've got an important job for you. Go and drink up all the sea. Elephant opened her eyes and lumbered slowly to her feet. Drink the sea, Sparrow, she rumbled. Yuck, the sea's so salty. Just one mouthful of her would make me sick. Please, Elephant, begged Sparrow. Just do it as a favour for me. But Elephant shook her head, lay down again and went back to sleep. You'll be sorry, Elephant, cried Sparrow. I'm going to get the fiercest creature in the whole world to bite you. Elephant chuckled. A big, fat thing like her wasn't afraid of anything. However, Elephant had no idea what Sparrow meant by the fiercest creature in the whole world. Can you guess what it was? The angry little bird went fluttering through the trees, calling softly, Mosquito, Mosquito, where are you? Can you help me? And at once, Mosquito came. Zzzz, she hummed. What can I do for you, friend Sparrow? Elephant's annoying me, says Sparrow. I want you to bite her ear hard. And at once, Mosquito cried. I will. Zzzz. Mosquito came hurriedly, boldly through the trees, getting closer and closer to Elephant. Elephant jumped up in panic. She was terrified at the thought of a nasty, swollen, itchy mosquito bite. Stop, she bellowed. Please don't bite me, mosquito. I'll drink the sea after all. She lumbered down to the shore and put out her trunk. But before she could drink a single drop, sea darted away and gurgled. Don't drink me. I promise I'll put out fire. But before sea could reach fire, he cackled. Don't put me out. I'm just about to burn stick. No, cried Stick, jumping away from the flames. Don't burn me, I promise I'll beat Dog. Oh, no, you won't, growled Dog, because I'm going to gobble up Mouse. He got ready to pounce, but Mouse scuttled away, squeaking. Please don't, please don't. Look, I'm off to chew Mr. Woodcutter's clothes. Get off, you silly Mouse, yelled the Woodcutter. Can't you see? I'm on my way to cut down tree. That will get rid of the nasty, selfish crow. He picked up his axe and got ready to swing it. Help, roared Tree. The axe came gleaming through the sunlight towards him. But before the axe could touch Tree's trunk, Crow squawked, Stop! and flew to the ground, carrying the peril. He looked very embarrassed. Don't cut down Tree, Crow whispered. Look, I've come out of it all by myself. He dropped the peril at Sparrow's feet. Here you are, friend. Is this what you wanted? Yes, answered Sparrow, whispering too. What a stupid fuss about nothing! Shouted Mosquito, Elephant, Sea, Fire, Stick, Dog, Mouse, Woodcutter and Tree. Sorry, said Sparrow. So am I, said Crow. The two birds hopped slowly towards each other and touched beaks. And after that day, they never ever argued again thank you for listening remember to subscribe to the channel for more great stories